Hi, I'm John, and today we have some really cool models from Class 1 Model Works to take a look at. So let's head over to the workbench. All right, so here's what we're looking at today. It's the Thrall 86-foot high cube boxcar model from Class 1 Model Works, and you know, I don't normally do this, but I love their packaging. It looks like a crate first off. And then when you open this top, not only does it expose the model at this point, but it also has the drawings of the real car, which I think is pretty cool. And as you know, I don't usually do unboxings here, but I just thought the packaging on this model is cool enough to share that with you. All right, so here's what we're looking at today. These are HO scale Thrall 86 foot high cube boxcars. These are from Class 1 Model Works, and they come in a bunch of different variations. What we have here is sort of a combination of both the four door variation and the eight door variation. They have a whole bunch of different road names and road numbers to choose from. These go for $59.99 at the time of this recording, and you can get them from Class 1 Model Works on their website. Each of these models came with a bag of extra parts. These are bearing end caps, and as we'll see, the bearing end caps rotate on these models. So, as always, due to the sheer number of variations on this from road name and road numbers, your best bet is to go to Class 1 Model Works website and see if they have what you're looking for. Okay, so since we have three of these to look at, I'm going to show you this one in great detail, and then I'll show you one of the others in also very good detail. Then we'll kind of skim over the last one, and I'll explain why. This is the Type 7 version of this car. It's a four-door model, meaning it has two doors on this side and then two doors on the other side. And so the other two that I have are the eight door models. And I'll show you as we go along here, but I do want to point out that it has separately applied details on the side of the car. And I'm talking about things like the end ladders, the stirrups are separately applied. All of the detail in the door area is all separately applied. It has separately applied door tracks, separately applied latch detail, and everything you see there is separately applied. They also have a tack board over here that has simulated wood grain in it. And then, of course, the paint and markings are all just spectacular. It's quite a treat to look at. While we're looking at the side detail, I want to show you how good the trucks look and the wheels. They have a treatment on the outside of the wheel face which makes it look like a different color. You see that? And then the rotating bearing end caps, as you can see, that's why it came with those spare parts I was showing you earlier. Very cool. Now we'll take a look at the brake end of this model. You can see all kinds of really nicely done, separately applied detail parts. I'm talking about things like the grab that goes across, of course, the brake wheel and chain detail, all separately applied. This is a photo etched platform on the end that looks really good. And you'll notice it has uncoupling lever and air hose detail. So there's a lot here to look at. Here's a look at the other side of the car. Again, same thing with the detail on this side, all separately applied. And as I was mentioning before, it had the two doors on the other side, and it has the two doors on this side as well. That's why this is considered a four-door model. And so a brief look at the AN reveals the same kind of detail and the same level of detail that we saw on the brake end, just without the brake wheel. Looking at the roof of the car, there's not a whole lot to look at here. It has the pattern on it that I always mention when we have cars like this. This kind of stuff really takes weathering well. But something I noticed that's interesting to me is that it has the overspray effect, which would be at some point when the car got sprayed 
or repainted in real life, they didn't bother to mask that. And so the spray went over to the top of the roof as well. It's a cool effect that I've seen on models like this from time to time. Now looking at the bottom of the car, you can see a lot of separately applied brake rigging and other details under here. There's just really a lot to look at. Also, while we're at it, I'll point out the metal wheels that it comes with. Very cool. It's just a very super detailed model. All right, having pulled the switcheroo, we're going to look at this Southern Pacific model next. And something uh, different on this one is it has the underframe cushion system. That's what these little, looks like a screw kind of. It's a spring under there. And the blue one didn't have that because it wasn't a cushion car. So I'm pointing this out because there are subtle differences in these models. And that's just one of them. And the guys at Class 1 do a really good job picking out stuff like that. And if you're paying attention, you'll notice that the structure around the ends of the cars, where the couplers are, also look different on this model compared to the one we were just looking at. Again, a prototype-specific detail. So the roof on this car also has that pattern that I was pointing out, but this one does not have the overspray effect. So this represents a car that was painted entirely, including the roof, all at the same time. We'll take a quick look at the A end of this car, and you'll notice all of the same kind of detail, including the separately applied stuff here, photo etched platform on the end. Uh, something else that they've included on this one is that treated tack board with the wood grain. Looks especially good. Now, looking at one side of this car, this is what I was talking about before. It's actually eight doors. You have one, two, and then three, four on this side. And on the other side, as you'll see, it's the same thing. Now, there's a lot of detail here because all of these doors have the separately applied door tracks. And also, all of the rods and levers are separately applied. Add to that all of the writing on this car, and there's really a lot to look at. And once again, here's the break-in with all that fantastic detail. Now here's a look at the other side and the other four doors that I mentioned. And here's the last car we're going to look at. It's the Erie Lackawanna paint scheme. And this is another eight-door car. Lots of separately applied Beautiful detail, especially around the doors. Here's a brief look at the brake end. Just looks spectacular. And a brief look at the other side. And here's a look at the A end, just in case you wanted to see that as well. And this Erie Lackawanna one also has that roof overspray look that I was showing you on the blue one. It's just a cool touch, I think. And here's a look at the underside of this car. And you can see it has similar detail to what we were looking at on the Southern Pacific one, including all that freestanding brake detail. And this is also a cushion underframe, so it has the spring detail under there. It's just a really super detailed model. And I suppose it should go without saying that a model of this caliber is going to have the body-mounted couplers and of course, metal wheels, right? And they all came with those things. Well, this is another very solid release from Class 1 Model Works, and I'm very impressed with the level of detail, especially the detail around the doors. This is one of those things that, if you get it right, it really makes a model stand out from the pack. And I think they really got that part right. I'm very interested to see, Class 1 is in the process of making a GP40, or it might be a 40-2, I don't remember which, but I'm really interested to see how they do with locomotives, because if the locomotives are as good as the freight cars, this is going to be another really heavy-hitting player in the marketplace. So great job, Class 1 Model Works. I can't wait to see more, because your models that you're putting out are just top tier.